Hey YouTube, I'm Neil Fox, creator of the Lucifer series. Uh, this video here will be a response to my uh, video, Lucifer on Kundalini. Okay, uh, a question keeps coming up on that video about Hinduism and Buddhism, and I want to clear that up right here for anybody who might be interested in it. Uh, Lucifer on Kundalini is my most successful video, my most successful promoted video in terms of views. Uh, it's not my top earner in terms of views, but it generates more views for other videos than any other promoted video I've ever had. It brings in three to four times as many views for other videos than it does for itself. I make uh, four to five hundred views a day when this video is up for promotion. And no other video does that for the series. So it's a lot of people's first impression of the Lucifer series. Okay, and so I want to add to it here on that one point about Hinduism and Buddhism. If people who've seen Lucifer on Kundalini don't realize that there's somebody named G.I. Gurdjieff and that the person talking in the Lucifer voice is discussing or taking issue with something this person named Gurdjieff said about Kundalini meditation and that the video is about this, then, you know, you're not a good fit for the Lucifer series, all right? And uh, we don't want you around any more than you want to come join the club, so to speak. <laughs> okay, right? Okay. Good. I'm glad we could clear this up. <laughs> the uh, Lucifer on Kundalini video took up the controversy of where Gurdjieff was at with Kundalini. He appears to trash Kundalini in a quote uh, made in, in Search of the Miraculous by P.D. Ospensky. And then in Beelzebub's Tales to his grandson in Beelzebub's uh, uh, chapter on India. He trashes it without calling it Kundalini. He calls it Kundalina. And alternately, Kunda Buffer. All right. And uh, someone, uh, I had always interpreted that in a way that suited my background. And I was straightened out by this by some, a viewer, uh, politely straightened out by someone, you know, nonpartisan guy who uh, just. Uh, pointed out this thing in Ospensky and it got me thinking, I better talk about this. I have never realized, I knew the quote from Ospensky that he was talking about, but I never took it that seriously. And I really thought that the Kunda buffer in Beelzebub was uh, in favor of uh, Kundalini. So I really had it either very wrong uh, or half wrong. So I got to thinking about it and made this video. So it's a big open question as to where G was coming from with uh, Kundalini, okay? And why would he call it Kundalina and not Kundalini in Beelzebub? But he just called it Kundalini in uh, his talks with his students. But that's neither here nor there. When talking with the one person who objected to the video, who had like two really intelligent points to make, I, they, were, they were valid points that they in deserved discussion. Didn't mean I agreed with the points while the rest of what he was talking about was uh, pretty disappointing, you know, pretty uh, uh, Mr. G is God kind of a thing, you know. I mean, you don't question Mr. G. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, the study of Gurdjieff is all about questioning Mr. G. It's, it's, that's the whole point. You're questioning Mr. G every step of the way. You're always questioning G all the time. And... Uh, and Gurdjieff, I doubt, would have had it any other way. There's a right and wrong way to question what he's doing, you know. But uh, you question it all the time. And I don't get that from uh, some of the Gurdjieffians that I've talked to on YouTube. I don't think they question the old man at all. Still, uh, one of the valid points the guy brought up was about Hinduism and Buddhism, and I want to respond to that here, and I'll respond to his one other big point uh, some other time. It's been months since then. I have yet, you know, you know, I've only getting around to it now, and I apologize because I said I'd get to it shortly, and I'm only just now talking about it, but that's just how it is.
First off, there's what you call God. The only objective reality there is to what you call God is what the Lucifer series calls all that is, and what Mr. G calls all and everything, and what the Hindus call Brahman, the infinite. The Buddhists and Taoists have no word for what these terms are getting at because they believe that what these terms are getting at are inexpressible and beyond definition, and I agree. But because we use language to communicate, you have to have a reference point, so it's a convenient and useful reference point. That's all that I'll say about all that is just now. <laughs> okay. Um, the Hindus teach the doctrine of Atman, the soul. The Buddhists teach Anatman, the no-self. Okay. This is where scholars come in and say there's this vast, unbridgeable gap. And it was enough of a schism back in the, the time of the historical Buddha that Hinduism, which is a big tent and embraces all these different uh, pagan uh, persuasions, you know, uh, rejected it as a separate religion because of this doctrine. But I say, and most people in the West who are consciousness people say, that all of this is getting at the same thing and moving in the same direction toward the same destination. I would say the Buddhists and Taoists are probably moving farther in that direction toward the destination than yoga might be heading. But it's really ultimately just quibbling terms, all right? It's a matter of accent and punctuation. The sentence is all still basically the same. Oh! <laughs> uh, excuse that interruption uh, <laughs> anyways the bottom line is uh, what you call God I call all that is I don't believe in the God with personalities and that goes for pagan gods and all of that giving them human personalities and they're all running around give me a break <laughs> it's all that is all and everything Brahma the infinite alright or the inexpressible Tao, the, you know, the unspoken whatever that isn't a what. Supreme being, hyphen being. God is a verb. <laughs> and please don't mistake my interest in Eastern philosophy for embracing uh, the morality of Eastern philosophy. Morality is a kind of an organic thing. It comes with awareness and with... Uh, meaningful to you as you uh, gain in awareness all right i'm not a big one on absolute morality whether it's about eastern philosophy or even gurdjieff or some other thinker uh we morality is just about getting along it's social and it's, it's different from culture to culture and how our conscience grows and matures is a matter of our experience and our development. So it's very subjective. So, as far as being a modern guy who doesn't display the outer decorum and reserve of a Buddha, <laughs> I hope to disabuse you of any impression that you might entertain that I'm such a person. All right. I'm talking about alterations of brain waves, and there are spaces where you are genuinely very reserved. You find yourself being that way, and there are other times when you're not. Okay, it's not about rules. Uh, I know this most around the Japanese than I do any other group of Asians because of my study of Zen. Is uh, it's so forced sometimes when you really get to know someone who's a traditional Japanese person. It's a lot of it is just just hold in and, and suck in your gut, which I don't even consider very healthy. It's a cultural ethos, and the fact that my ethos happens to be different than some other ego's ethos and what's expected of them and how they conduct themselves, eh, you know, give me a break. Hold me to that. Hold anyone to that. No, don't. As far as the non-expression of negative emotions that's supposed to be the third tier of uh, self-remembering and self-observation, I'd like to talk about that sometime in terms of an actual spontaneous ability to do that in a way that isn't about sucking in your gut and grinning and burying things and just doing what the ego does. 
because I honestly think that's more of where Gurdjieff was coming from. And he was talking about in terms of attainment. And that will come and go according to uh, your own groove with the energy. All right. It's a spontaneous and real thing that I don't think very many people who just have book knowledge of these things has any clue to. And I'd really, really like to talk about it in terms of a real space rather than uh, the ego's affectation or some sort of stoic uh, point of decorum, which just becomes such a lie. And I want to emphasize that, the lie of just not expressing a negative emotion, right? the lie of living with someone and holding things in and holding things back and not communicating uh, your shadow to someone close is uh, completely wrong-headed. And anything, somebody's reading in Ospensky or some book by Gurdjieff that encourages this kind of behavior couldn't be more wrong-headed. So anyways, Hinduism and Buddhism are very related to anybody in the West who's interested in the core experience that the higher schools of each tradition are coming from. I've been very seriously involved with Zen Buddhism in my time, and I spent some time with Kundalini Yoga, and they're both, there's so much overlap in the philosophies in terms of what you call God being as eminent in and trans, as it is transcendent over nature and the universe. Okay, it's called uh, these days in philosophical circles, panentheism, and I talk a little bit about panentheism in my video response to Venus Satanus, who is a for real Satanist, and uh, which I am not. Uh, it's called, uh, what is what did I call that one? A question for Venus Satanus. Okay, and uh, a lot of people like that one. Okay, where I'm actually myself talking in my own voice, which is unusual in a early video like that. <gasps> and I realized that uh, Zen Buddhism is more related to Tao than it is to uh, Buddhism itself. But I just have to laugh. And when you start experiencing the energy, when you realize it's about the cessation of suffering by bringing up brain waves, it just becomes so superfluous to say, hey, no, this isn't right. These are differences. There's big, vast differences. Uh, no, not in terms of what Western people are looking for in this, and that was the context. I'm doing a video talking to Western folks who are interested in this stuff. Recently, a person said, oh, Hinduism and Buddhism are no more related than Christianity and Judaism. And I laughed back with an LOL remark, just saying, so Christianity and Judaism aren't related? Okay, historically, no two religions could be more related than Buddhism and Hinduism. Certainly no other religions are related to those two traditions more than they are to one another. Okay, Buddhism historically came out of uh, Hinduism, was called Hinduism. That's a, a very inaccurate term. It's a the big historical yeah. Buddha wanted to streamline uh, Hinduism or, you know, his native religion towards something that would bring a monk into a higher consciousness in a more simplified way. Okay, so he was reforming what he'd grown up with. All right, so they're really very related, even historically, if you take the big picture. And as far as what Western interest would be in it for people who are actually wanting to meditate, I mean, give me a break. People who study Zen think nothing of going over and taking an interest in kundalini. And that's what I meant and where I was coming from. People have a problem with anything I say because I'm talking from the Lucifer persona and they don't get the context and they're reacting to that. Some people even seem to think I'm trying to demonize kundalini. <laughs> by coming across as Lucifer. My Lucifer is cool. He's friendly and he's uh, just talking shop. Okay. And that's just very jarring for some people. It's supposed to be jarring. Okay. If you can't step outside your definitions, none of the rest of what I might have to say is going to be of any interest to you at all. So we just go our separate ways right from the start. Okay. One guy thought I, my mind was being controlled by aliens.
you know, I get this, get stuff like this, you know, the real nuts. And like more than one person thinks I'm possessed of the real devil. Seriously. I know I was stupid, but I mean, here I am. I'm a guy talking into a webcam. <laughs> you know, not shaking. My eyes aren't glowing. All right. Okay. Relax. <laughs>